It's, a, it's always an honor and a privilege to be able to preach the word of God. Amen. You know, I don't take this uh, opportunity lightly. I never come casual in the presence of God. One thing I know is that whether pastor is here or whether elders are here, whether certain members are here or not, one thing I know when I come to the house of God, God is in this place. And when God is in this place, you better come ready to worship. You better come ready to give. You better come ready to receive. Why? Because God deserves all the glory. Would you say amen? I'm not going to be too long. That's usually the guy who looks like me with long hair. He usually takes about two, three hours. I'm not going to mention his name. Don't tell him I said that, amen? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, last week was our, uh, was our vision giving, but prior to that was Friday the 16th of August. And Friday the 16th of August, quick testimony from getting the word, is a, was a very special day to me, amen? Because on a... On, on the 16th of August, four years ago, I actually preached my first sermon for the first time in Breakthrough Worship Center. Come on, somebody. So last week, Friday, marked four years of me, you know, officially preaching within the walls. Amen. It was a very special moment. I reflected back on uh, the night that I first preached. The Lord brought to remembrance the word that I preached. And I just begin to give him more the glory. Amen. It was an honor and a privilege and um, not knowing that two years later on that same day, I was going to have a son that was going to be born, amen? So I'm sure I'll never forget that day. God is good. That is my testimony. Come on, someone shout. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Well, if you turn your Bible to the message I want to preach to us this morning, I'm going to be preaching out of the book of Matthew. The book of Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 down to 27. You know, I know this is a very familiar word, and I know that there are many that have preached this far better than I ever could. There are many that, that, have, that, that could, you know, divide the word of God far better with the intellect than I ever could. But I thank God that it's not Ray standing before you preaching. It is the Holy Spirit working in me that is giving you the word of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is good. And the message I came to bring today is build your house on the rock. Amen. I know we just been talking about build your church. And, but, I, you know, as I was, as I was uh, seeking the Lord, I think it's very important for us to have a firm foundation. It's very important to know what we are building our life upon. Would you say amen? amen. So we're going to get into a word. I'm going to be reading from the uh, New King James Version. Because I'm not Shakespeare. Verses 24. If you have your Psalm 1 Bibles or whatever translation you read, please follow along. And it says, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine, and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. Some say rock. rock. Verse 26, but everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house and it fell and great was its fall. You know, Jesus, the, the parable or, or what Jesus is saying is pretty much self-explanatory. Amen. It's pretty clear what Jesus is saying. Jesus is saying that you either, there are two types of buildings. And I want you to know that he's not talking about a physical house. He's talking about a spiritual house. Amen. And I know that you and I are the temple of God, but the house that Jesus is talking about, he's talking about your life. He's talking about my life. What is your life built upon? What is your life standing on? Jesus makes that very clear. Another thing I want to make note here in this, these passages of scripture, that 
There is two foundations which these houses are built upon. The first foundation is a solid rock. The second foundation is sand. And the third thing I want to make note to you guys is that they both went through the same storms. The wind and the waves and the storms both beat upon these houses. Are you with me? But there was a difference between the house that was built on the rock than the house that was built on the sand. Jesus said that the house that was built on the rock, though it went through the winds, though it went through the storms, it said it did not fall. But it said the house that was built on the sand. Oh, come on, somebody, you're going to help me preach. The house that was built on the sand, the Bible says that when the storm came, when the wind blew against it, it said great was its fall. And as I begin to meditate on this, I begin to think about foundations. I begin to think about, wow, what is my life built on? What are we building our life on? Such a pro, just such a, such a question that we should be asking ourselves day to day. You know, it doesn't matter where you are in your walk with God, whether you're one weekend, whether you're 10 years, whether you're 20 years, one thing I know is, if Christ is not your firm foundation, you will not stand. And Jesus says, therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, he says, I will liken them to a wise man. You know that this, this, uh, the sayings that Jesus is talking about starts from Matthew chapter 5. So I started reading Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 6, Matthew chapter 7, and I'll read it over and over and over again. And preachers will tell you that this is the greatest sermon ever preached because it came from the author of life himself. In, in, in Matthew chapter 5, he talks about the Beatitudes or, or attitudes of how to be. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. He said, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. He goes on to talk about that you are the soul and light of the world. All of this is in one sermon. One mind is blown. It takes us, you know, weeks just to break down one line of the Bible. Because why? Jesus is the word, and the word is life. Would you say amen? He began to preach in Matthew chapter 6, and he will talk about, do not worry about what you will eat. Do not worry about what you will wear, for these things dominate the minds of unbelievers. Who's been in Matthew chapter 6? Yeah. And then Matthew chapter 7, he starts off with, judge not, lest you be judged the same measure you judge others. You will be judged unto you. Then he goes on to say, broad is the way to heaven. I mean, broad is the way to destruction. And many are on it. Narrow is the way to eternal life, and very few find it. And out of all his teachings, out of everything that he said on the mount, he comes to uh, verse 24, and he says, Therefore, whoever does these words, whoever hears the words, but he doesn't stop there. Are you with me? But he says, whoever keeps the word, obeys the word of God. The first thing I want to bring to your attention is, Building your life on the rock is someone who is obedient to the word of God. Amen. Not someone who just hears the word of God. See, a lot of times we say, faith comes from hearing and hearing in the word of God. And we come Sunday and we hear the word of God. We go to YouTube. We listen to this sermon. We listen to another sermon. But if you don't obey the word of God, yeah. right. your hearing is in vain. He said, those who hear and do what the Word of God is saying, that's how you build your life. See, you've got to understand, church, whether you like it or not, every day that goes by, every minute, every second, every hour, you are building. You are building. Your life has been built. Each story upon another story, it is being built. And if it's not being built on the right foundation, if it's not being built on the Word of God, if it's not being built on Jesus Christ, the Bible says that when the winds come your way and when the storm beats upon your house, it says, 
great wood bill it's for. You know, I've been saved now, serving God wholeheartedly for nine years. I've been preaching for the last four years. I've been through some seasons. I've been through some moments. Hello, I know I'm only very young. I know I'm only very new to this, but I've been through a couple of storms. I've encountered a couple of winds, and it's exposed my foundation. Someone said, brother, how are you still doing what you're doing? How are you at 31 years old preaching the gospel? How are you taking a stand? And I tell him, you want to know why? Because Christ is my foundation. The winds came. The storm came. My house was shook, but I didn't break. You know, some Christians, some people, they build their house in the sand. The sand represents a, a foundation that isn't stable. A very shaky foundation. Have you ever seen a building? Maybe we don't see much. It could be like the wall over there in front of the toilets. Excuse me. It looks strong, but a bit of a shake and that thing will collapse. <laughs> see, some Christians, their life, because you've got to understand, both houses that were being built, they look the same. Both houses, they were hearing the word of God. Both houses, they, 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 they were built with the same materials. But they weren't built on the same foundation. Amen. See, some people think that when they follow Jesus, there's going to be no storm that comes your way. Some people think that when they follow Jesus, everything is going to be okay. I don't know about you, but someone has told me that a hundred times over. But just give your life to Jesus. Everything will be all right. No warning at all. <laughs> the moment I gave my life to Jesus, my whole house was shook. God needed to send waves. He needed to send storms. He said, you're building a house that is on the wrong foundation. Unless I expose the foundation, I cannot build your life. See, that's the reason why God sends trials, tribulations, and storms your way. Apostle Paul said in the book of Acts that we will strive to enter the kingdom of heaven through many tribulations. I was on the phone with Pastor and Mark, so one thing I said to them is, man, we must prepare people on how to live for Jesus in these end days. Amen. We need to condition the people to weather the storm. One thing I know is that when your life is built upon the rock, you will know you will be unshakable. Amen. You, you will be unbreakable. Amen. Sorry? You might get shook. You might even bend. But I promise you, if you were built on the rock, you will not break. Amen. The book of James, chapter 1, and verse 22 to 23 says. Do not just be hearers of the word, but be doers of the word. Those who hear the word and they don't obey, they only deceive themselves. Yep. Can we have that up, please? James chapter 1 and verse 23. And as, you, as many of you guys know, excuse me. Hallelujah. Amen. And many of us have heard this passage of scripture. How the Bible says... That anyone who, who reads the word and doesn't obey it is like someone holding up the mirror, looking into it, and the moment they walk away from the mirror, they don't know what they look like. Yeah. So I question, how is your foundation this morning? Are you building on the rock? Or are you building on the sand? Amen. Are you building on Jesus? Are you building on the promises of his word? Or are you building on the promises of a man? See, the sand, as I was saying, it represents unstable foundations. And so many people, you only nearly see, some of us have been there. Some of us have been built on these foundations where, where, this, where our foundations was power. Hello, somebody. That's why we want to drive nice things. That's why we want to, nothing wrong with all of this stuff. That's why we want to wear certain clothes because it makes us feel a certain way. Come on, somebody, I don't know about you, but any opportunity who's been to a wedding and the nice cars pull up and all of a sudden, oh, everyone's around the cars trying to take pictures. Just give me a while to know what it feels like. 
And if you've ever driven uh, something heavy or something really nice, something luxurious, it makes you feel a type of way. Whoa, I better rebuke this. <laughs> I'm feeling like falling in love with this type of feeling. Money. People build the people build their foundations on money. Some people will work, they're slave to the dollar, they're slave to mammon. Why? Because they think if I just have enough money, everything will be okay. If a bill comes up and I can pay it, that's good. If anything goes wrong in my family, I'll throw a couple of dollars at it. And man of God, woman of God, that is a blessing thing to have. But do you not know the story of the rich foolish man? When Jesus said that he had more than enough money, and he said, let me build a bigger barn, a bigger storehouse to store all my wealth. Amen. He said, then I will drink and be merry and enjoy life. And God said to him, you fool. I'm not saying you're a fool. It's what the Bible was saying to that man. He said, you fool. Tonight your life is required of you. Who now will take your riches? Hello. Money can't save. Money can't buy you everything. You see rich people all the time. The wealthy people all the time. You see the world crumbling. Why? They don't have a firm foundation. They don't have a strong foundation. Listen, I know brothers and sisters. I know Christians. They might not have it all. I know Christians. They might not have a lot. But one thing I know is they have Jesus. They walk around with a smile on their face. They walk around filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. Whether they have money, whether they have no money. You want, you know, you want to know why? Because they have a strong foundation. Amen. There is an unshakable hope. There is an unshakable peace. Yep. What about you and I today? Are the winds, are the winds raging? In your life, is the storm beginning to thunder? Because one thing I know is in both of these houses, the storm and the wind both beat upon the house. Amen. You see, one thing you, you gotta understand is that trials and tribulations will either make you or break you. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. Seasons that you go through in life are either gonna make you or break you. Believe me. Some Christians, as soon as it's not even it's not even a big storm, just a tiny drop of rain. As soon as the rain starts to fall on their house, their whole foundation is shook. Some people just a tiny wind. All of a sudden, you won't see them for a couple of months. Some Christians, it's not until the storm and the wind break down their houses. Till their foundation is exposed, until they humble themselves and say, God, I'm sick and tired of building my own house on the wrong foundation. I want to let you know, church, maybe you're going around. Maybe there's people in your life that you know. They build their house, and when the wind and storms come, it collapses. Then they rebuild their house again. It's like a Lego house. They rebuild it again. The moment another wind, another trial comes into life, it collapses. It collapses. And then they go running around, honey deliverance. They go running around because they're this, this spiritual babies. They're not planted in the house of God. They go running around, oh God, I need help. Oh God, honey this. And God says, no, you need to start building your life on the rock. You need to start building your foundation. Lest you build in vain. Church, it's time that we check our foundation. Amen. Number one, that, I like I was saying, your foundation should be on the Word of God. Yep. Jesus said that man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. In Mark chapter 4, he talks about the parable of the seed. And he talks about the heart. Who's with me here? And he says that when the word of God is preached, in other words, when the seed is sown, do you know right now the seed is being sown? Do you know right now that there is a seed that is being planted in each and every one of your hearts, even in my heart myself? Right now as I preach the word of God, 
your heart has become a ground that the word of God is looking for to that it may find fruit. But the Bible says that there is a, 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 a heart that was by the wayside. That as soon as it hears the word of God, listen, listen. As soon as it hears the word of God, the moment the service is finished, one, two, three, to God be the glory forever and ever, amen. The devil comes immediately and steals the word. Meaning by the time they even get in their car, they completely forgot the word of God. This happened to me many years of my life growing up. I would hear people preach, preach. I would sit there and I would leave and have absolutely no idea what was going on. This is why the word of God must be your foundation. Amen. And the core of your foundation is your heart. Amen. The heart determines, the Bible says, the heart determines one's life. Amen. That's why Jesus said, I will remove the heart of stone. Hello. Amen. And I will give them a heart of flesh. I will write my laws. Put it on their hearts and on their consciences. Then the Bible talks about a ground that is, that is thorny. That they receive the word of God. They hear the word of God. But there's, there's, it doesn't go deep enough. There's not enough soil there. There's too much thorns. There's too much things in the way that are blocking the word of God from growing deep into your heart. I don't want anybody in our church, in this ministry, to have a thorny heart where the word of God is being sown week in, week out, and it's not finding root. And the Bible says because the, the, the seed doesn't have enough soil, it gets choked out. Amen. Then the Bible talks about a, a, a heart that is like a rocky ground. They receive the word of God. They take in the word of God. They drive home. They go to their, 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 their Sunday lunch. Wow, what, a, what an awesome service. I'm so blessed by the word. God is so good. I can't wait for next week. And then as soon as the wind and the waves come. The Bible says as soon as trials, tribulations, as soon as certain situations come their way, it chokes out the word of God. But then the Bible says that there is a soil that when the word of God is preached, when the seed is sown, it says it receives it with gladness and it produces much fruit. Some 40 fold, 50 fold and even a hundred fold. And if that is you this morning, why don't you put your hands together and make a joyful noise to God. Come on somebody. You know, I was from another church, um, I just might not believe you, but praise the Lord. That's why it's important to get the word of God in your heart. Amen. The psalmist said, your word I've hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. See, some people, they know the word of God with their mind. They know the word of God with their lips. But their heart is not rooted in the word of God. Amen. The word of God is not instilled in them. That's why when certain things happen, Listen, that's why when the biggest wind and wave came my way and on January 21st, unexpectedly, when my father was taken to heaven, I want to let you know something, church, my house was shook. You know, there's some Christians, maybe you see them jumping up and down so crazy. Maybe you see them with their hands up. Sometimes they're the ones who are facing the biggest battles. We often think it's the Christians that just sit there like, I don't want to be here. But one thing I know is when Christ is your foundation, when your life is being built on the rock, you know how to worship God. Amen. Come on, you know how to weather the storm. Amen. The Bible says that when the wind comes and the wave comes and it begins to shake, what you've got to do is get on your knees and pray. Know how to worship. Amen. And when that happened and my father went to be with the Lord, my whole house was shaking. Everything that I knew, and I wasn't sure. But one thing I knew is, Christ is the rock upon which I stand on. Not a man. Not a person. I'm not preaching because a man said to me, you're called to preach. I'm not doing something because a man has told me, this is what you're supposed to do. I'm doing something because I know Jesus Christ is my foundation. And I will continue to build on the rock. Come hell or high water, I will be standing here. Amen. 
to the day he says, welcome, good and faithful servant. And I'll never forget it. After the, the morning service of my father's, before we went to bury him, before we went to lay the body at rest, I remember walking out of that church and just seeing his body slip back into the car. And I went back and, and I couldn't speak. Church, I was, I was hurt. I was so broken. My heart was so confused. And I remember jumping in that car. And my wife says to me, it's going to be okay. And she turns on that song. And it was a song from Jesus' image that, that all glory, all power. And I begin to worship God. In one of the most hardest moments of my life, I sat in that car. And on the drive to the cemetery, I said, God, you deserve all the glory. You deserve all the praise and all the honor. Amen. Many churches, as we know, as soon as the pastors go, I know many pastors' kids. I've been a pastor's kid for nearly my whole life. And they live with this stigma, with this stereotype that the pastor's kids are the worst. And usually what they do in most ministries is they put the pastor's kids on a pedestal. They, they sit them right in the front and they expect them to be just as holy as a pastor is or as the pastor's wife. And it's like you're living on eggshells. The moment you make a mistake, they're going to make sure that you know about it. And that's why many of them grow rebellious. That's why many of them say no to the call of God. That's why when their fathers or when their parents finish up with the ministry and they look to their children and they say, who will run the ball for the kingdom? Most of them don't want to do it no more. You want to know why? Because they've been hurt. Because the wind and the waves have broken them. Their foundation has been exposed. What about you and I this morning? Because the winds will come. The waves will come. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Number two. How is your relationship with God? How is your connection with God? You know, the city is where it is. Here's a fun fact if you didn't know. The reason why this, this city of Sydney is along the harbour then around the water is because it's built on the rock. There's a lot of rock around the harbour. That's why they don't make the mainland like in here like the city and that. Because they, there's not enough rock, they can't build it high enough. But this city, there's a lot of sandstone that's under there. Not sand, but sandstone. And when you, sometimes they would dig, builders would dig as deep as they can until they hit the rock. The moment they hit the rock, they say, okay, this is a good place to build. That's why you see skyscrapers in the city, like Center Point Tower. You see like 86 story buildings. You want to know what's at the bottom of the building? Stone. That's what's at the bottom of the building. A solid rock. Why? Because when your connection with God, somebody better hear this this morning. When your relationship with God is deep, when your, when your relationship with God the roots run deep. When you're founded on the rock, you will grow higher and higher and higher. Amen. Winds will come, the waves will come, but it's not going to knock you down. It's, it might shake you, but it won't break you. Amen. Psalms 92 and verse 12, if we can have that up, please. How is your relationship with God? This is a question that I ask myself on a daily basis. This is a question that you and I should continually be asking ourselves. How is my relationship with Jesus? How is my walk with Jesus going? Because you've got to understand church. You can have fellowship with church. You can have fellowship with the people of God. And you can have fellowship and, and have... Again, I'm getting excited. I said you can have fellowship with the people of God. And you can have no fellowship with God himself. 
Some people think if I can just, and, and, and you know what, it's kind of similar how we've been talking about the law and, 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 and grace. If you've been to Fedroots, yep. how we say that we don't do things out of trying to get right with God. We do things because we're right with God. Amen. And sometimes that's like that with our relationship with Jesus. Hello, we don't come to church to try and, and hopefully we'll connect to the people of God. Then maybe then I can connect to God. It doesn't go that way. It's because we're connected to God, we're connected to each other. Amen. See, listen, some of us, we couldn't even hold a conversation, you know, outside of Jesus. But the one thing that we have in common is we have the same foundation. Amen. You're built on the rock. I'm built on the rock. Let's go build together. Someone shout hallelujah. hallelujah. How deep is your connection is, is with God? You know, here's one for the... Here's one for the younger generation. It's just like your Wi-Fi. How many of you know that when the closer you are to the modem of your Wi-Fi, the stronger the connection? Yeah. I know this because when my son used to play Fortnite, he used to go right into the room where the modem was, and he'd be sitting there playing, and I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, Dad, the, the connection is stronger in this room. That's just like the house of God. When you come to the house of God and you're surrounded by the people of God, you're in a strong connection point. Just like, but you're not connected to the Wi Fi, you're connected to the Most High. Someone shout amen. amen. And it says that the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree, he shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Verse 13 says, those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. And verse 14, they shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. Verse 15, they shew that the Lord is upright. He is my rock. Someone say, he is my rock. He is my rock. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. The psalmist is talking about being likened to a palm tree. For those of you from the island, like a coconut tree. How many of us know that the coconut tree, it grows high, it grows long. You know, not like any, many of the trees. These palm trees, they, they thrive in the heat. They thrive in the heat. One thing I noticed, you know, I started Googling palm trees and coconut trees. But I do this stuff when I'm, when I'm preparing for the Word of God, amen. And one thing I noticed, I, I, I come along a lot of videos, and it was showing like tornadoes and storms, and they'll come, and houses will be getting ripped up, cars will be getting thrown around, but the palm tree is planted. The Bible said that those who, who walk in righteousness, they will flourish. They are planted in the house of God. Come on, somebody. The, the, the palm tree. The roots grow deep. And the deeper the root, the fresher the fruit. Amen. He said that even in their old age, they shall bear much fruit. They shall be fat and flourish. Hello, that's me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God is good. And all the time. Are you listening, church? Are you with me? And just like how the palm tree is planted. And like I was saying, I think lost my train of thought. The, the houses will go flying. The cars and that will go flipping. And here's the palm tree just swaying. Just swaying. I should have prepared. I should have told the media team to, to run it up. I probably did. They say, listen, man. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But the palm tree, because it's so planted, it's just like you and I, when you are planted on the rock, when you're planted in the courts of the Lord, the storms and the winds will come your way. It will not break you. You might bend. Say to your neighbor, you might bend. But you won't break. See, the palm tree, or, or, or those of you who grew up in Samoa, you know the coconut tree, when the wind comes, it, 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 it seems to bend, am I right? Yeah. But right after the wind passes, it straightens up again. Wow. That's just like you and I, when you're rooted in the Word of God, when your foundation is on the rock, you might bend, but you will not break. Yeah. You will 
flourish. When Christ is the rock of your salvation, you will flourish. In other words, you will grow. Amen. Hello. Am I talking to some growing Christians this morning? Amen. Growth should be your middle name. You should be continually growing week in and week out in the Word of God. Amen. See, some things, you know, when you come to the altar, that's where things die. It's a place of sacrifice. So come and, and they'll lay things on the altar and, and it'll die there. Amen. But some things don't just break all that want to the altar. Amen? Amen. Listen to me, church. The word of God is my armor. The word of God is my weapon. The word of God is my helmet of salvation. The word of God is my all in all. Amen. I can't stress that enough to you that you need the word of God. Amen. Why don't we stand to a feet? I'll call the worship team up. I told you I don't go for two hours just to go off the long hair. <laughs> but you know what's profound when you go to the book of Matthew chapter 7? Right before Jesus talks about building your house on the rock. He says from verse 21, remember verse 24, it talks about building, but verse 21, he says something so profound, something that shook me. He says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father that is in heaven. Amen. Do you remember when they said to Jesus, Lord, Lord, and Jesus said, why do you call me Lord, but you don't do what I say? Why do you call me when you need a savior, but you don't want to serve me as your master? Many Christians, many people that will stand before God, and we all will. The Bible says it's appointed unto every man to die once and face the judgment seat of Christ. Check your foundations, because on the day you stand before God, Your foundation will be exposed. Amen. Your house might look like your neighbor's right now. Your house might be bigger than the one that's next to you. And I'm not talking physically, I'm talking spiritually. But one day, your house will be tested. One day, that house will be shaken. And the foundation will be exposed. Amen. And Jesus said that many on that day will say, Lord, Lord. He said, no, everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. In other words, not everyone who hears the word of God is going to heaven. Not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, I'm going to heaven. But he says this. But he who does the will of my father will inherit the kingdom of heaven. Faith comes from hearing the word of God. But faith isn't something that is heard. Faith is something that is done. Faith comes from hearing. And when you believe that word, listen to me, if you believe the word, not my word, the word of God, if you believe the word, You will obey the word of God. 